welcome to How Do You Drew? This is a Drew Barrymore podcast brought to you by thedrewzium.com. And sponsored by our friends at Positive Medium. I'm Anne. And I'm Ashley. And then I'm happy to be here with you. Yeah. <laughs> so I like I like how when you stood up, a giant raggedy Anne doll appeared behind you. <laughs> you did not warn me about that. <laughs> I wish that was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> Anne was quickly replaced by Anne, and everything yeah. <laughs> and everything is back to normal although raggedy Anne is a-n-n not a real Anne. <laughs> okay back into it <laughs> Ooh, shade <laughs> all right we've newly named what we were calling follow-ups was yep. this yours did you come up with this pun no my partner Jared the pun master. <laughs> yes. I don't even, what else did he come up with? I, lots, lots of things. Of them. <laughs> Drew Slash, I think he helped us with. Um, anyway, let's get into some Deja Drews. Ooh, I love it. Um, okay. So that's what, we're, that's a follow-up. That's what that's called now, guys. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have more on Drew's RV trip, <laughs> which, you know, we, we're taking responsibility for because- in our 1996 episode, Anne said, has she ever done another RV trip across America or big trip like that? No, no. And then all of a sudden, what does she do? She hops in an RV. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I just love it so much that I feel like I need to play it again. Is that yes. absurd? Please do. What's that? Oh, it's the RV, Dougie. It's the magic car. Woo, woo. Home away from home. <laughs> I think that's just going to entertain me forever. I think magic car is like in there with like, I yes. love perching birdies. Yeah, and- it's a, it's a like forever going to be something that we say. Yep. And she keeps talking about it. So we have to keep talking about it. We have to keep bringing it up. Yes. <laughs> it's a wonderful cycle. Yes. And I love <laughs> that we've got more about it. So let's yes. get into the extra details. Okay. So she was talking about it on the show. And she said it was from New York to Florida. And I was like, oh, that tracks because we knew she had done that spring break surfing thing in Palm Beach. Yeah. She said that she chronicled the whole trip for an upcoming issue of Drew Magazine. (gasps) So that'll be exciting. I'm guessing photos and just like details of what they did. Oh, I can't wait for that. I know. And then she told a really funny story about how on this trip, she accidentally took an ice bucket from a hotel. Like she brought it out to the RV and then forgot to return it. (laughs) And then she's like beating herself up, feeling horrible. She's like, I I don't steal. They're going to think I'm a person who steals. And she was totally upset about it. And then Ember, who we said she knew, we knew she was traveling with flower film longtime staffer ember she secretly called the hotel and paid for it so that drew wouldn't have to feel bad <laughs> oh my goodness they would have just charged her for it anyway probably, probably. Like, <laughs> but it's also like oh my god drew. i mean that's classic that's so yeah, funny so sweet <laughs> i love that little story me too so this is a little tidbit related to the et record Oh my gosh. So if those of you who do know, those of you who don't, Drew did a record in 1982. Disney had this line of records and books, read along books. Did you have these? I had a ton of these as a kid. No, but I was Uh, familiar with them. Like read along, like read dash a dash long. Like I, I, I can like picture it as the logo and everything, but I don't think I really had them. Okay. So um, she narrates the story of E.T. It's like E.T. as told by Gertie is what it's called. And um, it's really cute. And we both have it. And, you know, we've gotten lucky enough to play it over the years. Like, it's funny, like when I first got it, a record player was impossible to come across. I don't think I listened to it for years, right? Yeah. You know what? I just had a funny memory. I feel like I was like on a road trip at a cousin's house and they had a record player and I was like, I played it there. Like I snuck oh, play it or something weird like that. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway. <But> yeah. <laughs> like I know that when I got a record player in like 2015 yeah. might've been the first time that I played it. And if I had played it before that, it would have been like more than 10 years before that probably. Like, <laughs> and now of course the whole thing's on YouTube. Like of course you can it go is. <laughs> watch and listen. Anyway. So that's the background for this story. So 
this woman I saw, I get like alerts about people talking about your own podcasts. Most mm-hmm. of them I totally skip over because a lot of it's dumb, but yeah. something about this one piqued my interest. So it's a woman who worked for Disney, like in their music department. Mm-hmm. And she essentially produced a lot of these, um, including the ET one. So cool. And she told a story and then she also has a book. So she released a book called part of the magic. And she tells a story that Steven Spielberg directed the session, which we never knew. Yeah. New info. So cool. She said that was like, there was usually a different woman who would have done it, but Steven offered to do it. So, um, I was like all excited to hear the story. And she tells a whole story about like how Drew really wanted chocolate when they were recording. Oh. And she like enlisted this lady to like help her get the adults to give her chocolate. (laughs) And then uh, she talks about meeting her years later, like in an airport and telling Drew like the stories of it. And Drew like got so emotional and was so like Mm. touched that this woman had these stories that she didn't like recall herself. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to like look at the book. And if you're sneaky about it on Amazon, if you use the search function, you can sometimes actually look at the pages. And she had two amazing pictures from the session, one of Drew and Steven in the recording booth and one of this woman, Bambi and Drew and Drew's giving her bunny ears. And so cute. So cool to suddenly come across that. I love when you're doing just like just branching off into a little bit of detective work and you just like I feel like this happens a lot yes (laughs) and it's really fun it's the best I love it so thank you for finding a new treasure I know so anyway um I just posted that on our Drewsium Instagram account Mm -hmm. today at Drewsium so if you guys want to check out those pictures you can look there but we'll also throw them in the episode page on howdoyoudrew.com cool find really cool find thanks Okay, so now Drew talked to Janet Jackson on the show, and they were talking about her 1995 uh, Video Music Awards look. Um, So we have a little clip for this. Yeah, because we love this look. We got to talk about this. So things sure. we're going to go to the 90s, right? Drew, take a look at this. This was you, Drew, at the uh, 1995 oh, oh, MTV that. VMA. I remember that moment very Tell well. Tell me really about cool. that moment. Um, well, I I found I had this wig, but I was like, for whatever reason, I'm going to break out the wig, throw some daisies on it, and I designed the dress so that it had 1940s sort of Rita Hayworth out of Gilda, you know. Mm, um, it's beautiful. Thank it's beautiful. you so beautiful. much. One thing is that she said she designed it to do this. And we know from what? What was the detail that we knew about Wishful Thinking? So we've always thought like this dress looks exactly like the dress she wears in Wishful Thinking, different color. Mm -hmm. And I had reached out to the costume designer, David C. Robinson on Instagram at some point. And he confirmed that like he drew wanted the dress for the VMAs and he worked with her to get it for that. Awesome. I'm not describing it well, but <laughs> but basically along those lines. we confirmed that they worked together and yes. that it was that connection that we had kind of thought yeah. for that time. So, but it's it's really neat to like see them go back to this and just hear her talk about that. I don't and know. And also like I've it's always been like, why did she wear that wig? Well, she doesn't really know. She just thought it'd be fun. Like I love <laughs> Now we know. And it works so perfectly. Yes. And do we think it's the wig that she wore in the wishful thinking scene? I'm not great with wigs. Like it's definitely much more like structured in wishful thinking. Okay. So if it is, she like played with it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So she also talked about um, a movie that she passed on that you said that maybe we knew already. Um, I'll play a little clip of that and then we'll talk, talk about that. Okay. Oh, it's so hard when you like are, are thinking of doing a film and then you don't end up doing <laughs> it. I have so many of those experiences. Mine was, uh, I've never said this out loud. Oh, what? Boogie Nights. Oh. I, there was a moment where we were talking about Boogie Nights, and I, I, I think it's when I went and did Ever After, oh, and I went wow. in a very different direction. Yeah, but Ever After was so great. It, 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 yes. Yeah. So that was fun. <laughs> and I don't recall that at all, like knowing that in the past, so... It was like, it didn't ping as new information to me. Okay. Like I was kind of like, yep, that feels familiar. I, but I think it might've been one of those things that like, maybe like Premier Magazine had a like yeah. blurb that she was in talks, you know, to star in it or something like that. Yep. 
but we can assume it was Heather Graham's role of roller girl. I think that makes the most sense. I could totally see that working at this time in Drew's life. Oh my God. And I feel like it totally has to be. I completely agree. It's been a long time since I've watched that film, but that's the only thing that kind of makes sense right away. Man, style wise. Ugh. I would have loved to see dreamy. <laughs> oh my God. Dreamy. And I love that the picture you pulled, she's got like heart shaped sunglasses. Yeah, I was like, like, yep. To totally see that. So she said in this clip that she thinks she did ever after at that time. Um, what do, do we think that's the right time? Up? So I'm going to be a big nerd and I don't really know that that makes sense. Okay. Basically because Boogie Nights came out in October 97. So we can mm. probably assume it filmed at the end of 96 mm-hmm. and ever after didn't even start filming till the end of 97 and she mm. said that she found out about like the Cinderella movie that was in the works at the everyone says I love you premiere which was January 97 so I don't know who cares right <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a nerd but I of course my I start going well when did this happen <laughs> but also like if we think about like what she was doing like 96 and 97 like that timeline 95 96 97 she was pretty busy So it could have been like anything else she did that seems like a departure from, you know, like the way that it would have gone if she was roller girl. Like, I mean, that would have almost like brought her back to like sexy, you know. Totally. Yeah. So it's interesting. I mean, I like to think of that at that time she was already thinking of like the turn in her career. And maybe Uh that's why she thinks about that. We've been talking about this a lot. Like, oh, yeah, it's going to come up more in this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So now we've got quite the little uh, heart stopper here. <laughs> Do you want to talk about this or? Oh, the rare photo <laughs> that Drew posted that killed us. We're officially dead. We're podcasting from the grave. <laughs> if you didn't know, like it is possible. So if you want to just, you know, make sure that your podcast continues, you'll be fine if something really exciting happens to you. <laughs> just be buried with your microphone. That's the key. <laughs> That's the key. Yeah. That was part of, that was the only thing on my will. Um. So yeah. So Drew shared this incredible self-portrait on the photo it says October 1994 it looks pretty like accurate I would say definitely (laughs) with the caption my tweezers and I were best friends at this time in my life and impossibly thin eyebrows impossibly thin I mean (laughs) so October 94 I always forget like the quite the timeline but Mad Love filmed in the summer of 94 yeah yeah okay so this is like right after that I mean I remember when we watched Mad Love I was just like oh my god could they be thinner I think they're thinner here (laughs) I think they might be and the crazy thing is this is a cosmic coincidence Uh uh-huh two days before she shared this on our Drusium account posted a picture of her in 95 raise your hand if you like still don't have eyebrows because of 90s Drew Barrymore (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. <laughs> some people like responded on our Instagram like she definitely saw this but Aww. I don't know I don't know she doesn't seem to be like that active um, yeah. as far as like perusing Instagram lately still we like to think that there's you know that we can have an influence in some way on what you know <laughs> we just need to start like putting all the stuff we want like the things I know that, <laughs> like just just put the things out in the world that we know so little about. And then we'll just like get an influx, you know? Yeah. Like that's how it works. I totally, it's been working that way. (laughs) I'll take some more like 1994, no eyebrows Drew wearing her, you know, almost like candy. uh, It looks like a candy necklace. Candy beads. Yeah. Yeah. So cute. And also such a selfie pioneer, Drew. Oh my God. Right? Like nobody was taking pictures of themselves like this that I know of in the 90s my friends and I were taking them of each other but we weren't like taking them ourselves away. and she always made them look so good Drew share all your selfies with us there you go <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a selfie a day you know like that would <laughs> I'd be totally fine with that <laughs> you know what? it's gonna bring me back to life I forgot there we you said go. We were dead. yeah we're dead um, <laughs> okay so what did Drew proclaim her love for in the past couple of weeks I love love. Okay, we've got Drew loves a crispy tofu. Mm, me too. But she also loves a tofu scramble. <laughs> <laughs> um, she loves solar. Okay. Sydney, Australia, which Ooh, we're mentioning that later too. Interestingly enough, exactly. It was totally unrelated to that. That's funny. She loves kids food. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Panera. Okay. Swaddling babies. <laughs> That's cute. 
The peplum. Don't know what that is. Okay. So it's a fashion thing. I had to look it up too. It's like when a shirt has like a little ruffle that comes out around, along the bottom of it, like almost looks like a, it flares out like a skirt. I don't usually like that at all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And also Drew loves everyone. <laughs> of course. That's also the onion. Drew, you're just a yeah. walking, you're just a walking you. You're just you. You are, you are as Drew as could be, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Speaking of Drew being her, what do you have for the Drewism of the week? You know, those cool little isms that we do. Okay. Sadly, the audio of this isn't available anywhere. It was only on Paramount Plus. So it came <laughs> and went, but I just related to this personally. She was talking about how she's always hurrying when she's in the shower. <laughs> And she said, quote, the time is melting like a dolly painting. (laughs) And I just totally feel that. (laughs) And if you don't get the reference, the famous dolly painting is the melting clocks. That's like so good. Yeah. (laughs) The reference is multi-layered and I really appreciate it. Um, That's a perfect one. Oh, Drew. Okay. (laughs) And I have some fun comments to share. (laughs) You've got mail. Okay, so this is like an in-person uh, interaction. So I have to relay the story. I've been holding this back from you so that I could tell you <laughs> live on the air. Okay, let's hear about it. I okay. love this. So last week, I quickly mentioned one of my favorite in yoga instructors. Her name is Becca and how she's really into the moon. Mm-hmm. And so I told her, oh, I talked about you on my podcast. And I sent her like a little clip of it. But she ended up listening to the whole episode, which is really nice because I'm like, it's a really like, interest (laughs) but she was like oh my gosh I listened to the whole thing I can't believe how professional it sounds I was like yes she's like I was going this is my friend I can't believe this I know and then she said uh she said she's never seen scream and she feels like she absolutely needs to do that I was like yes get on that now but she also said, she's like, after listening to the whole thing, I think I'm kind of enamored with Drew Barrymore. <laughs> I know. So I'm that was enamored. really nice. Thank you, Becca. <laughs> oh, thank you, Becca. I hope you keep listening. I mean, yeah, we're in this little niche corner of the internet, but like we are very passionate and I'm glad to hear we sound professional because. <laughs> yeah, I told her I was like my friend and my co-host, my co-everything, she does all the editing herself. She's like, isn't that a lot of work? I was like, oh yeah, we do everything <laughs> ourselves. I do all the social media. She's like, and all the prep. I was like, yep, we do yep. all. We do it all. <laughs> we do it all. And if we ever become like a pro podcast where we have the option to like give some of that, like, I don't even know what I would be able to give away. I know. I told you that too. I'm like, I'm so like, ooh, I'm so clenched about everything. How can yes. I delegate? <laughs> yes. But you know, speaking of you know, being supported we this, like getting these comments is like so lovely for us. Yeah. Absolutely. If you want to help us monetarily, you can become a Patreon member. That's true. <laughs> Good so, shout out just there. Just a little, you know, a little pseudo commercial here for our um, <laughs> Patreon. How do you drew pod? I mean, I remember, I'll just say like, I did have some interns last year. I probably mentioned it on the podcast. So last year I mentioned to one of them, like she told me she loved Scream. And I was like, oh my God, I just did a podcast episode about that in October, like the previous year. She listened to it, thought it was so cool. And then one of the other interns like told me like, I think I said like, oh, you know, remember I do a podcast. She's like, I know I listen. It's really good. I was like, oh my God. (laughs) So it just makes me like, you know, just a little, little bit of a, I was going to say like jitter joy. That's not what I meant. I like that. Yeah, jitter joy. Let's (laughs) let's just go with that. (laughs) Let's go with it. Okay, so now we're going to get into the kind comments corner. The light in me sees the light in you. Okay, this was on Instagram on the picture of Drew with the eyebrows. Uh Um, One of the comments I really liked, this is from at Freedom Love Joy. Okay, they said... In the 90s, there was no one hotter than Drew Barrymore. She was the guest girl, wore chokers like a boss, made slip dresses look like a dream, and had the world's cutest short haircut. Trying to be like her was just an accepted hobby. (laughs) Some of us are still doing it now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Isn't that good? Yes, that's so cute. That's such a fun comment. It's like multi-layered. It like gets... You can tell they were there for the yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah, it spoke to me. I was like, yep, we got to include this. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Thank you for pulling another kind comment. No problem. For this week in Drew history, you said he didn't go too far back, but I would argue <laughs> two years ago is history. 
I was like, um, this is really recent. Same, but <laughs> but we never talked about this because it was right before we started our podcast, right? So like we never really discussed this. So we're gonna do it now. Yeah. All right, May seventh, two thousand twenty-two. Mm-hmm. Ross Matthews, Drew's co-host. He uh, got married to his partner Wellington Garcia in Puerto Vallarta, mm-hmm. and Drew served as their flower girl. <laughs> so cute, wearing a oh. bright yellow dress. Yellow everything, even eye makeup. Oh yeah. I remember like when I saw the look, I was I was kind of like, whoa. And then I was like, she's pulling this off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so wonderful. Well, it's so funny because she had kind of invited herself to do this on the air, on the show. Like during Drew's News, they were talking about the <laughs> wedding that was coming up. And she's like, Do you guys have a flower girl? And he's like, No. And she's like, Do you want one? And he's like, Oh, you could be our my flower girl. And she's like, Yeah, I want to. Oh my God. And it really happened, which I kind of love that. Just like following through (laughs) a lady of her word. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, It also was reported that Drew had suggested that they got married wherever seemed right. Cause they were kind of stressing about doing a destination Mm -hmm. um, wedding. And Drew noted that whoever showed up would be the people who were meant to be there. And Ross said that was great advice. So they got married where they met in Puerto Vallarta. Oh, that's so sweet. This is a fun one. I mean, I think I think it's fun to talk about it because we always talk about how much we love Ross and we love their their dynamic on the show. And so what a fun way to like celebrate that. Yeah. Plus the photos are just fantastic. Like there was the ones they shared officially with people and then some that were posted like on Instagram. So uh, we'll share a couple of them because I I don't know. It was like this was like in the midst of her wearing like a lot of brown suits. (laughs) And then it was like this fun yellow floofy dress is like such a nice departure (laughs) yes although it is like everything everything was like big and flowy and this is also falls in that category yeah we saw her shoulders for the first time in a while (laughs) good point good collarbone (laughs) (laughs) we're into it howdy Howdy, droomies We want to tell you about our sponsor, Positive Medium. We've actually been clients of theirs for at least 10 years, and they take care of all of our website needs for thedruseum.com. They offer custom web design and professional coding, search engine optimization, marketing, and hosting. So we've been hosted by them, but we've also been able to take advantage of a lot of their expertise in these other areas as well. Absolutely. So customer service is the biggest draw for us with this company. They have saved our site literally from obliteration (laughs) quite a few times, but then they also help us with minor issues in just like literally a matter of minutes. So if we have like a coding question or just like something on the back end we can't figure out, we reach out to them and we get an answer back and the issue is solved within moments. We're so excited that Positive Medium is allowing us to offer our listeners 25% off managed WordPress hosting plans using our promo code DREW, D-R-E-W, of course. Um, And if you want to take advantage of this, visit positivemedium.com. We really, really vouch for these people. They've been so great to us and will continue to be great to us, I I can only imagine. (laughs) I mean, they're great by offering this to our listeners. So take advantage. Again, it's promo code DREW, of course. (laughs) Okay, so now let's get into what's new with Drew. Do you want to hit the headlines? So in August, we found out that Drew will be in Australia for Wanderlust True North event. I was so like, I have no idea what this is. Yeah, same. It will be August 2nd in Sydney and August 3rd in Brisbane. Uh, We have a couple friends that are close enough to Sydney. I think that they'll probably be going there. So that's really exciting. Um, We we text message Tess right away. And I saw that um, Becca is going. Uh So anyway, it's described as an intimate, candid evening filled with joy, laughter, and inspiration. Drew will bring her extraordinary life to the stage, sharing heartfelt stories, entertaining anecdotes, and her commitment to making the world a better place. What? What is this? Why is it happening in Australia? (laughs) Why? It's like a one-woman show about her life. What is this? I mean, I'm like wondering because if it's like Wanderlust, like maybe this is what they do is like events like this? They're like a wellness company. I got that far. I was still like very, it's very like abstract you know but that's yes. that's what I can gather we need to get the entire thing recorded like what 
I know. Hope maybe we'll share it. And I'm also thinking we'll just have Tess on the show after yes. she goes and she can report on the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be like, uh, you need to take notes the entire time, Tess. You can't be in the moment. <laughs> listen to previous episodes with Tess make sure you go back in our just the hairstyles episode there you go so in the hairstyles episode she talks about encounters she's had with Drew in the past so let's hope yeah. for another <laughs> yeah so exciting but so random so yes. random I want to know how this happened <laughs> me too like what I mean it sounds it sounds really cool so we can't wait to hear details and it's only a handful of months from now so it won't be yeah. so long <laughs> Next and thing we'll we share know. um we'll share the link to this in our episode page for those of you down under who maybe didn't know and want to check it out. Yes. Great idea. Um, okay. So now let's talk about what Christine Taylor was talking about on the show with Drew. Okay. This is a big one. This is our big chunk. So yes. this is really cool. I'll give like the background. So Christine Taylor, of course, Drew's co-star uh, played her cousin in the wedding singer. They're still lovely friends. She was on Hey Dude, that show in the nineties on Nickelodeon. Yes. Did you watch that one? I did. Yes. Yeah. I loved her all the way back then. Of course, of course, she's like the pretty blonde, sweet girl in, in the show. So she <laughs> yes. was my favorite, Melody. Yes. Um, so her co-star from that show, David Lasher, they have their own podcast. It's called Hey Dude, the 90s called. And they just have like a lot of 90s celebs on and they just talk about our the best decade ever. That's so fun. Drew agreed to be on their show, I guess, a, a year ago. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. And it took this long, but you know, she was like, yeah, I'm totally going to go on the show. But what if you guys also came on the Drew Barrymore show to like promote the podcast? And then she's like, we've been talking, like, what if we just record on our show? Like you come to the studio, we'll have the audience. We'll do a normal show. You guys take the audio home and you get the full thing, like the uncut. Yep. And that's going to be your podcast episode, which is really cool. And they were so excited and so like great grateful about that opportunity. That's so cool. And I didn't listen to the longer version that you discovered they were they released. Oh my gosh. Cause I think the Drew Barrymore episode segment was probably like maybe 15 minutes, maybe. Yeah. And the podcast version, which came out just a few days ago on, uh, again, it's called Hey Dude, the 90s called. It's like almost an hour. Awesome. And they said they just sat there and talked with her that whole time. They didn't take any commercial breaks or anything. Like she gave them that full hour of their time and oh. the whole audience was there the whole time and everything. I would have loved to be there for that. <laughs> oh, oh my cool. God. So the reason this is so special is they weren't just on, you know, as guests, they were essentially interviewing Drew. Like she was basically their guest, their guest. for their show. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so they get into... The best decade ever, the 90s, mm -hmm. and Drew's career resurgence. It was really fun to hear them re like phrase it that way because I feel like we've been talking about that so much. Yes. And uh, it was just really neat to hear her sort of talk about that whole period, like where she wasn't working. Mm hmm. This was really funny. And I felt like we had to include this audio. Yes. <laughs> because we're always making fun of Drew for getting years wrong. <laughs> You know, just to sort of talk a little bit about like how that reentry was for you is something that, you know, we would love to hear about because that was such an interesting time too. And great, great film work. My God. I, you know, God, okay, let's see. I, I'm so bad with like years in math. Um, <laughs> uh, I was born in 1975. So by 1990, I was 15. <laughs> I just love that she like does some quick math. Yeah. I feel like that, that one little snippet, we just need to keep on hand. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just go like, every time she gets it wrong, we're like, yep. we know, <laughs> um, we know here, we're here to give you the information. Fine. We can do the work, Drew. <laughs> but it also, it tends to, you know, of course it's like off the cuff. She's not, yeah. you know, she's trying to think of like herself at 15 and the fact that she gets into that, like that alone, let's oh. jump into like what they talk about. Cause I don't, I, so I watched the clips from the show, but it was very truncated as you said. Yeah. I mean, she does the full thing where she talks about, you know, the whole story that we know, like she was emancipated by the mm -hmm. courts at 14. She lived on her own. So she had to like, she, uh, she tells the whole thing about going to do her laundry and going to bookstores, like all that stuff we, we already it. know, which is 
just, I love it too. It's, it's never gets old to hear about. Mm-hmm. She mentions, of course, about working at the coffee shop, the living room. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just thought it was fun. She name dropped some of the people who would hang out there. <laughs> um, we already knew that's where she met Cameron Diaz when Cameron was a model. Um, yeah. They were 14 and 16. <laughs> she oh always God. says that. Um, Christina Applegate. Love that. Cool. Balthazar Getty, her former flame. Yes. And I wonder if they met there. They I was did. wondering the same. Yep. And then David Arquette, her maybe former flame for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I, we always love like we knew kind of bits and pieces, but getting a couple more names is yeah. fun. Um, speaking of names. This was just a random tidbit I had to grab because I was like, wait, what? Um, Drew says that Guy Oseri, who is Madonna's longtime manager, among other things, uh-huh. gave Drew her first pager. <laughs> and so I was like, what? Like, why? That's so random. Um, and then I was like, well, he does have cameos in both Charlie's Angels movies. Um, in the first one, he's the DJ during... Um, Cameron Diaz is Natalie's dream sequence where she's dancing. Mm-hmm. And then in the second one, he's like uh, the guy who gets shot by Seamus in the flashback scene where him and Drew are teenagers. Anyway, so he's in both the movies. So those are so random. You just found that out by like. No, I knew that. Oh, you already knew it. Yeah, I knew okay. that. That's just like a dumb fact. I know. So, but an additional, <laughs> an additional thing is that he gave her her first pager, which is. So yeah. Funny. And then I like, I was like, what the heck? So I Googled their names together and I found like random photos of them posing together or out together through the gears. So yeah. I guess they're just friends. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we just, just love funny... these little bits of information. Yeah. So if we ever see like a pager early on in her life, we can be like, I wonder <laughs> if that's the one from Guy. Okay. <laughs> so you said she said something about an AOL email address that she still has it. Yeah, that's what she said. I don't know if I believe that. I mean, I I think it would be really kind of amazing if that's like one thing that she's like clung to. Because I I think people still do have AOL email addresses. Like I remember having customers that would tell me their email addresses and I'm just like. I do know one person who definitely still uses hers. I would not be totally surprised, but I doubt it as well. But also, yeah, this is a fun little side note. So I don't know if. Maybe a few of our listeners realize, but the clip we use for our You've Got Mail is an audio clip that AOL released of Drew Barrymore saying, You've Got Mail. Um, there was also, um, what was the um, exit greeting? Exit, the exit greeting was cheers. cheers. And they, yes. yeah, cheers. And then when you signed on, because these were the sounds when you signed on to AOL. For those yes. of you who are too young to know what we're talking about, <laughs> sorry. But when you signed on to AOL, there was like a welcome. There was a you've got mail. And then when you signed off, it was a yes. what if what if it was the normal one? He'd just say bye. I don't uh, goodbye. remember. Goodbye. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we can all yep. hear this in our heads. When we first met online, I had an AOL email address. Yes. So did I. You were soda poppers, right? Yes. And I was Marsha Brady. <laughs> That's right. Speaking of Christine Taylor. Oh my sorry, god. Sorry to talk over you, but it's no, funny. that's that's really funny. Um, we used AOL Instant Messenger for like another 20 years or something after that. And I think that the, that had the option for the sounds too, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. We actually, I bet you are early, um, like working remotely together on the Jerusalem. I bet we did through AOL for a long time. I know we did. Probably. It's crazy. Anyway, that's so funny. <laughs> so yes. Yeah, so the, I just remembered the intro one was, hey, Groovy. Hey, Groovy. <laughs> You've got mail. Cheers. I can hear them all perfectly. We should probably just use our own voices saying that to have better <laughs> audio quality. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like every time I put in the you've got mail and it's got like, I think it's like, Haha, you've yeah. got mail. Yeah. Every time I put it in, I'm like, can anyone else like understand where this is from? <laughs> Does anyone know what that is? Mila's like, what is that? <laughs> That's so weird. You guys are so weird. <laughs> but, you know, we love the 90s. We always want to talk about the past, everyone. We do. So if you want to reminisce with us about AOL or AIM, <laughs> what, tell us what your old, uh, like, email addresses or chat names were. Yes, please. Anyway, so let's get into a little <laughs> bit more from the podcast, um, podcast slash episode of the, of the show. So they, uh, Drew mentions that a couple of things that she auditioned for, I knew at least one of these, but she mentions Encino Man, which Christine Taylor says she also <laughs> yeah. auditioned for. They say My Two Dads, which was that a TV movie? 
No, it's a TV show, like a sitcom. Oh, interesting. I know. She mentions my stepmother was an, is an alien and the Coneheads. And then she kind of says like, oh, they were all like either Brendan Fraser or Polly Shore movies. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of funny. <laughs> We always like hearing like possible casting things. <laughs> we do. Why is that always so fun? And the Coneheads came out in 93. So I feel like weird. that's like, oh, I think Encino Man might have as well. It's kind of weird. Like you almost think like, mm. oh, she was like on her way back by then, but she really wasn't. She was still struggling for work. It's well, this is a great segue. Fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Okay. So they also got into flower films. They talked quite a while about flower films and most of that is cut out of the episode of the Drew Barrymore show. So definitely go listen to the podcast episode. Mm -hmm. She talks about how, of course, flower films was partially created because like no one was offering her parts, mm -hmm. but she also talked about, and I've never heard her say this before. She talks about the audition process and the casting rooms and how like sterile and unwelcoming those always felt. Mm -hmm. And like, She's like, it's like a job interview. We all know this feeling like you're going in and you're just trying to like, you know, do your best. And it's just so uncomfortable. So part of what also she wanted was to create like something to go against that. Mm. So she wanted a more welcoming environment. And she also mentions how their original offices, which on sunset, those mm -hmm. cute ones that they were comfy and colorful exactly for that reason to be opposite of that sterile casting room. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So two of her great friends have served as like the casting directors on the films, right? Oh my God, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, Justine and um, Kim Davis. So it's kind of cool to think like she did it like almost like through her friends, you know? And I feel like, I feel like I maybe heard somebody talking about Justine and her being like lovely in the casting room. Did we have someone like, anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about, but basically it's cool to think about that. Like this is coming from like friends of hers also. God, how did I miss that part? That's amazing. <laughs> That's so cool. It's so fun Aww. to think about. But like, I, really I love is. that. I love that she did it from like the inside out. Yep. That's what she does. The whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, then she had some fun stories about her film. So I also didn't hear this part because it wasn't in the show. So tell me about some little tidbits about her films. Okay. Um, definitely. I, we're going to just like quickly go through these. Definitely suggest you guys go listen to this full episode. Yes. And I will as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do get into poison Ivy because she's sort of talking about how everyone, you know, she like, first of all, couldn't even get auditions. And then like, mm -hmm. she started getting auditions, but everyone just looked at her still like, we just see you as a kid, but you're not a kid. And it yeah. was, she was in this no man's land that happens to so many child actors. Oh my God. Before we move on, I just remembered there's the part in the show where she like shows that like, <sighs> I can turn that on. Yeah. And she like flicks her hair. <laughs> flicks her hair? Oh my God. And I like took a screenshot when I was watching because I was like, oh, did you? Oh, Drew. Yeah, I should, I should send it to you. So you can Let's put it in put the, it episode in the page. page. Yeah. Drew is still this fun, playful. You could almost see the childlike part of her, but she can turn that on. And <laughs> yeah. you know it because of like yeah. photo shoots. She, it's a character that she has in her. Anyway. And that's exactly what she says. She said she found the script for Poison Ivy and she yeah. flipped her hair over and she <laughs> said, I can do this. If you see, you see me as a kid, I'll show you I'm not a kid. <laughs> we're, and we're going to talk about this really soon. I, I have mixed feelings about like, her being the age she was when she was doing these sexy mm -hmm. roles and being typecast as a sexy girl. Yeah. She was very, very young. But yes. anyway, like, let's put that to the side. She definitely takes ownership of this decision. She mm -hmm. says she was never, she's never been a like, um, what's the word for when you like plan it all out? contrived not contrived she didn't um, have like a master plan she didn't have a master plan normally but with this one she was like all right I think I know how I'm gonna change things and that was like why she wanted to do poison ivy <laughs> she was very intentional I don't yes. know what the word you were looking for was but yeah she went into it knowing what she was doing and and achieved it yeah. <laughs> because it gave her some power so you want to talk a little bit about what she said about scream yeah, there was nothing new, but I'm always just like happy to point out when she talks about it because yeah. it's my fave. Of course, they get into how she basically was an unofficial producer on it. Um, David, the co-host, was like, wait, you guys produce that? She's like, yeah, unofficially. Like, we found the script. I got it into Wes Craven's hands. I wanted him to do it. Like, you know, um, so she mentions all that. And she even mentions the wine stains, which I was pretty surprised by Br very briefly. And then, you know, she tells the story about how she was attached to be Sydney and like changed her mind. And they were like, that's not what you uh, agreed to. And yes, 
she said she knew like she was being like booked as the lead, but she yeah. also mentioned she never thought of herself as like the star or having the yes. star power. So she didn't think that they were going to be that upset about that choice. <laughs> yeah. Like her not realizing her star power and how much more stronger that made that decision is also yeah. like really interesting that it was like her face is on the poster. It's like she kind of knew, but didn't know. <laughs> yeah. And like for it to be like, we have a marketing plan now based on yeah. like her, your face. Like, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I'm sure we talked about it in the podcast episode, but was Drew in the trailer? Oh, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Probably prominently, right? Yep. I mean, it, people definitely thought she was the lead of the movie. Yep. Yep. So it's amazing. I mean, even if she doesn't understand her power, I think now she knows that that she can go in a room and people are like, okay, Drew Barrymore, you've got a good, like, I think she knows her reputation, (laughs) like, precedes her, Yeah, you know, in a good way, you know, to like, she's like built this reputation that we talk about. And anyway, so um, I liked what she said about Never Been Kissed because it was interesting to think of it in this lens. Yeah, She said she, and I've just never heard her say this. Maybe I, she said she was really nervous and anxious when they were in production for Never Been Kissed because she said everything rides on this. And she's like, I am like, it was her responsibility. She was the leading lady in this, you know, it's like she, this is when she intentionally went into it and knew, I mean, you don't see that on her face in the film. No, not at all. And I mean, she says like, she knew it was their one shot, like at this time, like sort of what Hollywood was like with these like actors with production deals. If this didn't do well, they weren't getting another chance. And it set like a certain precedent also, Mm -hmm. you know, like she had to set the precedent for herself, but oh, it's just so interesting to hear that. Cause I mean, I, I don't know. We know that she has like both low self-esteem, but also like (laughs) goes for things and, and like trusts her gut. And I don't know. It's, it's cool to hear. I didn't tell. Yeah. We didn't make notes on this, but she also talks about how, and we knew that like the studio was calling and being like, you look too ugly (laughs) essentially but she says like that they kind of said you're losing the heart because you're going so far with the awkward comedy yeah and that she like pulled back and like what we got is the pulled back version so I can only imagine what Josie was like before (laughs) yeah and we did talk about that and it's interesting because it made me think different I mean of course that comment so at first I was like is that just how they were justifying it but when they just yeah. said about going too far for comedy, it felt like, oh, so maybe, she, you know, she was really going to go comedian and yeah. then just kind of went more love interest. It's got, it's got rom-com. It's got, you know, like late 90s teen high school movie. It's got so many <laughs> things going for it. So if it was too more too much more slapsticky, that would have definitely True. taken away. Yeah. Okay. So then Charlie's Angels. So, okay, it was just cool. They were talking, uh, she was talking about how Nan like found the script or found out they were making, there was no script. She found out they were making (laughs) Charlie's Angels at Sony and she came in and she's like, dude, I want in, which that story felt familiar to me. Yeah. Uh, But, uh, you know, she talks about how, of course, we love this, like, you know, they're in their corduroys and their jam sports. She always (laughs) phrases it that way, which is so funny. I love it. But that like they'd go into these meetings and be like the only women in the room and young, like she was only 25 at the time. And anyway, she said she just thought about Pippi Longstocking every day because Pippi showed her that girls can do anything. Oh, and we just, I think <laughs> yeah. it was the last magazine we did, On nylon, right? On yep. Yes, that she talked about Pippi a couple times. I yep. feel like in that, was there like a picture of Pippi or something? In yeah, the there was a poster was in? In, the, in the office, in the yep. far film offices and the lady said that she was Pippi one year for Halloween and Drew was like, oh, I'm going to like you. (laughs) That's right. So that's so fun. And also like Drew's character, Dylan has red hair. So it's kind of fun to be like, Pippi. (laughs) Oh, I didn't think about that. I wonder if that's intentional. Maybe. (gasps) I could totally see that being. I could see that too. (laughs) Oh my God. That's like a perfect when we interview Drew, we're going to ask her that. Please (laughs) don't forget. (laughs) Somebody else out there remind us. (laughs) Last but not least, so there was a little surprise, and they did show this part on the Drew episode. Um, Debbie Mazar showed up, and I feel like they introduced her in an interesting way, and I can't quite remember what it was. Well, it's kind of funny. So in uh, at the end of the podcast episode, it's just Christine and David kind of like 
talking about it. Yeah. I just kind of talked about it at the end. And Christine says that like the cue cards kept coming up. Like you need Debbie's ready. Debbie's on <gasps> zoom, like get ready. And like, she couldn't find a way to like segue to oh, it. No. <laughs> So oh I my god, that was cute. But they they made it work. She like spun something about like female duos. It was actually pretty good. I thought she did an alright job. <laughs> it was cool, and I hope um Drew actually was surprised. She seemed to be. I hope so too. Yeah. I know you never know, but yeah, so cool to see Sugar and Spice back together. Even if they were like on two separate screens, it still was so fun. Yeah, she like zoomed in. I guess we should be clear. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she wasn't there, but she zoomed in. It was crazy. Like I was thinking. I don't feel like since Batman forever came out that Drew has really spoken about it at all. Like it's so rare that she speaks about that movie. That's true. And it's such the, a small role. I mean, I right. guess like, but we have all those clips at the time. If you listen to our 95 episode of yeah. her, like, describing her as the sugar dip Marilyn and all that stuff. Yeah. And the extended version, they actually talk much, much more about it. So it's cool. really neat. Um, but yeah, one of the quotes I liked was Drew said, uh, I have never worn clothes like that before or since (laughs) but yeah they talk a lot about their outfits about how they couldn't sit down they had to like have those like leaning board things Um, they talk about like doing the photo shoot with um her brits the promo photos oh they talk about being in the makeup chair next to like jim carrey and tommy lee jones and and they were saying how grumpy tommy lee jones yeah that was yeah (laughs) And that he drew's his worst nightmare because she's so like, oh my God, Tommy. And he's like, Whoa. that was really funny. <laughs> so anybody who's into Batman or Batman Forever specifically, this was really cool. I sent this to, um, there's this great movement online. I've probably talked about this called the Cut Schumacher. Oh, because there's yes. like a whole nother version of the movie that would be like the director's cut that yes. this whole huge movement of people trying to get it released anyway. But I sent that to them and they were really excited to know about this. Cause I could awesome. see like, you're not, this isn't going to come up like in your searches necessarily. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that was really fun. We love a reunion. <laughs> <laughs> We've said that so many times. I mean, it's just so fun every time. It's become such a thing on yeah, her show. It really has. They're digging into that. This season alone, I feel like there's been so many. I love it. Just think of like Drew's connections are so deep. Like think of like all of the people she's made films with. Oh my God. (laughs) And how many they're probably asking and don't come on. That's the trippy thing. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson, (laughs) we're looking at you. Okay, one last thing about Debbie though. Yes. This was so cool. And like they were all floored by this information. So Debbie auditioned for and was cast in Christine's role in The Wedding Singer as Drew's cousin, Holly. So crazy. And weirdly enough, Guy Oseri comes up again because somehow, so so I don't know if you know Debbie's like best friends with Madonna. Oh no, I didn't know that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like always has been kind of like way, way, way back. Okay. So Guy Oseri would be their connection. Somehow he knows Adam. So maybe that's how Drew knows Guy. I don't have a freaking clue. Oh my Um, God. (laughs) But he got her like, to like get in the room and she got the part, but her agent urged her to turn it down and said they weren't offering her enough money. And she was like, but I really want to do it. And the agent was like, really pushed her not to do it. She regrets it to this day. Like she's really sad about it. My gosh. Christine's like, I'm always the person they call like when someone else can't do it. (laughs) Christine is so great in that role. If you listen to us oh, talk I about know. Wedding Singer. Yeah, we raved about her a lot. In yeah, the we did. Both versions of our, we, so we have the regular episode and then we did a commentary track on our Patreon if you guys want to hear that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we love her in that role. But it is kind of fun to think about Debbie. Like it'd be a very, it's a different vibe. But totally I can, different I can vibe. see it. it totally. Just be yeah, totally. She would have rocked the 80s stuff like just as much. Like yep. that's so that's so fun. Once again, we like those like what ifs. Yep. <laughs> Sliding doors. Yes. <laughs> One of the last things that she mentioned on the podcast, which I just really liked, was sort of about how she doesn't really allow her ego to let her like sort of reflect on her career that often, mm-hmm. which we know we get. That's why she doesn't listen to the podcast for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But she said she'll have these little moments where she'll see like something ET or she'll see a scream mm. mask or she'll see a Charlie's Angels doll. And like these moments in pop culture that are 
affiliated with her. She even mentioned um, the Jenners who dressed up as Sugar and Spice for Halloween. Yeah. Like those moments where she really like goes like, wow, and like really takes a moment to appreciate. Soak it in. What she's contributed. But I will never really be able to process it fully because growing up in this business, I really thought I always loved and followed and aspired to be like the people who were so humble, grateful, and more normal that didn't take this job as a license to think that they were in any way special or different. Mm -hmm. And I just think that I... And I worry that maybe I won't take in all the good because, you know, I'm so disciplined. But it really does hit me in moments of, like, how lucky I've been to be a part of these things that are a part of pop culture. Attitude, yeah. Yeah. And um, I I appreciate those moments so much because I don't stop myself and think, oh, you can't enjoy this moment. I'm like, fully enjoy it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's so interesting, but... It absolutely makes sense that she has a hard time with it. Yeah. I love that she's able to like, because that would be so weird if it's like, you're just you. (laughs) Does she know she's Drew Barrymore? (laughs) That question again. Yeah. Like, I don't know that she knows, but also like, yeah, that's a good reminder. Like these things are everywhere. Yeah. I'll just say like when I was in Italy, there was a candy store that had an ET in like every corner. And I saw them in like a couple different places around. And I was like, that's so weird. But it's also like. That's recognizable. That's yeah. Th- that's Drew Barrymore's like. That's what really, really launched her career is like that creature, <laughs> you know, and that like weird little turtle without a shell. <laughs> Gross me out. <laughs> Segwaying back to the ET record, <laughs> but I love that. Yeah. So she just really appreciated like you know getting to do that with them and sort of giving herself the time to look back on her career and be proud of herself. And I love that she felt like it was a good place to do that. We always want to hear you do that, Drew. She said like the only other time on the show that that's sort of like the tables have been turned yeah. was when Gail King did that like movie behind the scenes thing with her. And she picked those like really random movies. Remember we were like, oh my God, she picked like Waxwork too. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. Yeah, it was an amazing <laughs> thing. That was really cool, actually. Yeah, but she said those are like the only times. And I was, I wanted to be like, oh, we'll come on and ask you questions about your life, Drew. Absolutely. <laughs> we'll come, we'll come record our pod on the show. I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, this is the thing that she's doing now because <laughs> we're ready. <laughs> we'll just get with Christine's people, ask them how they did it. If it took them a year, it might take us five. We'll be here. <laughs> we'll be here. <laughs> So here we are at the end of our Drew's Flash. And thank you all for taking these um, little tidbit episodes. Yeah. Deja Drew's and all that stuff. <laughs> I feel like we should apologize. Like we said we had a bigger episode coming. We're not just not quite there yet. Anne is traveling. It's still coming. <laughs> you know, we had to take last week off, but we're doing what we can to get the content out there for you guys. And hopefully it's worth yes. it. <laughs> Yes, I promise it'll be worth the wait. (laughs) I know. And we still have our next chapter of Little Girl Lost we're getting ready to do. That'll be chapter four. If you guys aren't on Patreon, that's where those episodes are going. And they're really good. They're really just check them out. Trust me. (laughs) (laughs) And then we really do have a big movie episode coming and we've kind of teased what it is. So you might know, but that's going to be a biggie. Yes, that will be coming around. You know, it just will be. You just have to be patient. I was thinking today <laughs> how like absolutely daunting it will be to do ET whenever we get around to that. Uh, and I was just like, it's such a like legacy. Like there's so much. Like we'll really have to kind of narrow in when we do that one. We will, but I also feel like we might have to tackle it in a similar way that we have to like Donnie Darko, where we like get into Drew's specific yeah. involvement. And then it's like, That's a good idea. if you want to know more about, I mean, we still, we want to honor it, but I feel like there will be part of it where it's like, this is Drew specific. I like that thought. Okay. That feels way less intimidating. But also like y'all, the ET episode's not anytime soon. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you so much, you guys, for hanging in there with us and being patient where the content comes and it comes when it can. Drew's day <laughs> is whenever we want it to be. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but we love you guys being here and listening to us and all the nice things you have to say. If you want to tell us in person, you can, but if you can't do that, you could always tell us in a review on Apple Podcasts mm-hmm. or, you know, shoot us a message. We're on Instagram at how do you drew pod. And then of course we also have at Truzium. Both mm-hmm. of those are great places to reach us. We love talking to you guys. Yes. And some other places you can find us in our content. Um, go to our website at how do you drew.com, host it on the OG, the Drewzium.com. Sign up for our Patreon. We've mentioned a couple times, patreon.com slash how do you drew. Um, don't forget to send listener mail to how do you drew pod at gmail.com. And just because if you want to write a snail mail, uh, send it to how do you drew PO box 416 Phillips, Maine 04966. And if you want any of that info, go to our website. There you go. <laughs> I spelled Phillips right on our website after you let me know I was missing an L, but it's going to be wrong forever on Instagram. Sorry. You know what? I think, I think USPS can figure it out if they have 04966. <laughs> I think so too. I think <laughs> Why do we need any of those other numbers on there? Just give us all a number and send it to our blood. Um, (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you for returning for our Drew's Flash number 12. We'll see you all next Drew's Day. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye now. This episode of the How Do You Drew podcast was researched and produced by Ashley and Anne from thedrewzium.com with help from our sponsor, Positive Medium. Special thanks to Matt Costa for our lovely theme song, Roxy Prima for our adorable logo, and last but not least, Drew Barrymore and all the Drewbies who love her. We do this for you. Thank Thank you. you.